Hey, I got a Hoshizaki ice machine that's making no ice. Let's get at her. All right, first thing, I want to make sure water's on. Filters are two years old. So that's definitely a concern there. Let's take a peek in here. Yeah, we got a little bit of ice. Some dripping. But they said they've been running this for like two days. Definitely not enough ice in that bin. So let's take a look here. You know, barely any water running out of this pump. And well we can see at least the evaporator coils freezing up, which is a good sign. So we most likely have a water issue here. For how this water circuit works and how we're gonna troubleshoot it. Okay, so for ice machines, I like to break it down into three circuits, water, electrical, and refrigeration. Uh, you'll usually find the problem is in the water circuit, and if not, it's in the electrical. It's very seldom that it's in the refrigeration circuit. So let's just quickly draw out how we're going to, um, how this works. So first thing, we have our water supply. So in this case, we have water filters. So we come through here, we come to our fill solenoid. Okay, in this case, our fill solenoid is timed, so it's going to come into here, and it's going to dump into our little water trough. Okay, and once we fill up our water trough, uh, we're going to get suction from the pump, and the pump is going to bring it up into the evaporator coil, and we're going to start freezing on our coil. Okay, so as we get more ice on the coil, so as this chunk of ice gets bigger, um, this water level is actually going to start dropping right here because we're freezing up on here and this will grow. Okay, so we don't have a float switch or anything. We bring in water and we don't add in any more water throughout the cycle. Okay, so the, the component we're going to test right now is going to be um, this water pump right here okay so how we're going to test that is I'm literally just going to dump water into here and if the pump starts pumping okay we know the pump is good and it tells us we have not enough water in the trough so let's go do that test right now all right so let's get let's dump some water into this trough and look at this uh, delicious water we have here. Healthy stuff. Let's dump her in. And let's see if this pump is strong enough. And look at that. Like magic. So that's telling me our pump is good. Okay. That's telling me we do not have enough water in this trough. So we just eliminated the pump and let's go troubleshoot why we're not getting enough water in this trough. So I did just complete a cycle. Let's just make sure that tells me the refrigeration cycle is good. I don't need to worry about the refrigeration cycle now. So I did let that complete. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fire up and let's see what our water pressure is. And we have really good water pressure here. You could see that solenoid was open. So, um, water pressure is not going to be an issue here. All right, so let's carry on with our fill cycle here. Let's make sure we're filling up our trough enough. So, let me just pull out these little grids here. And let's see if we can see how much water is getting in this trough and it is filling you can kind of see it there sorry these little tabs keep popping down uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get a good shot here but it is filling I can see it filling and it feels like we're at the appropriate level it's filling quickly and you can see our pumps turning on so that's telling me that we're actually filling the trough with enough water for the pump to operate. 
All right, so at the current moment, I know I have water in the trough. And there's enough water for this pump to run, okay? But now the question is, is there enough water in the trough? So if water gets below this line right here, you can see the pump can't pick it up, right? So how do we know if our water level's high enough in the trough? So there's actually an overflow in this trough, okay? And that's the best way for, for us to really test it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump more water in here and I'm gonna see if it comes out of the overflow. If it comes out of the overflow within a couple seconds, and the overflow will be somewhere right here. If it dumps out of this overflow, okay, I know we have enough water in that trough. Okay, so let me go add just a little bit of water and see if it comes through. All right, so let's get our water ready here and let's dump it in and let's watch our overflow. Let's see if we can catch it. And see right there, Okay, that's telling me we have enough water in the trough. So that's telling me the pump's good and the solenoid's good. Right, what I'm going to do now is let's run a cycle. Let's time it. And who knows, maybe the pump's getting weak throughout the cycle. I don't think that is what's going to happen here. But let's time it and see what's happening. And while we're timing that, let's get this uh, condenser coil all cleaned up while we're waiting for... Um, this pump or this solenoid or whatever to fail. So we'll hit fast forward here and let's get it all cleaned up. All right, so look at that. 11, 12 minutes into the cycle. And we're having the same issue again and look at that water leaking okay so we're losing water is what's happening and that's why the water level in the trough is dropping so low that the pump cannot pick it up anymore we're only 12 minutes into this cycle uh, we're still like probably seven eight nine ten minutes away from uh, the harvest all right so what's happening here is we have a little bit of ice on here okay and as we know, if we get ice on there, this starts dropping this level. If we drop below this level right here, okay, the pump can't pick it up. So what's happening is the water's actually leaking out of here, okay? It's le leaking into the bin. And what happens if that leaks, this is going to drop down. And we're below our pickup point on the pump right here. And if we're below that point, obviously we're not getting any suction. No discharge from the pump and it means our coil is no longer going to make a thicker slab of ice okay so we're losing water through here through the trough okay so let's go investigate why that's happening okay, so one of the main reasons why uh, this trough would leak like that is because uh, the unit's dirty and the water's just not shooting where it should be from the pump so let's take everything apart let's clean it and let's go from there So got everything clean as you can see we are still leaking so I've tried to level this thing front back left right um, I'm not having any luck all right so as you can see this trough is pretty loose so see when I hold it into place tightly the leak goes away okay there's no more dripping with me just holding that into place so my theory here is um, the trough is not sitting in this trap track correctly and if I let go of it, see, it starts dripping immediately. You can see here the taps are worn down. Yeah, this thing's worn down. So, I'm just going to jerry-rig something up here temporarily just to prove my theory. That the trough is in fact loose, so whatever, just jam something in the track there. Let's start making some ice, alright. So we're 18 minutes in. Okay, the pump's still going strong. Remember last time it was 11 minutes in. And now we're going into harvest. And let's just pop open one of these little tabs here. Let's see if any ice drops out. And 
look at that. Just like magic. Ice dropping out. So our MacGyvering worked. Okay, so the issue is this trough is not sitting on the track correctly and it's loose. And as you can see, yeah, we're making great ice. So, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I like to break things down into three circuits. So we know the refrigeration's good, okay, because um, we added the water in and it made ice. Okay, we know the water is an issue and then the electrical is all good. But let's just quickly go through the electrical. So first thing we're going to do is let's find our loads. So we got our pump here and our water inlet valve so these were the ones that were in question so really easy we're coming right here for our neutral straight shot so that's super basic coming through here bang bang and then for our hot side uh the water inlet valve is coming through a relay on the board right here okay so normally open normally closed okay that's going to be on a timer for uh when we fill at the start and this will close. These contacts will make, will fill the trough. And then we come through here. And then we're just coming through our bin control. So what our bin control is, if the ice bin is full, this switch will open. Okay, so obviously the water trough won't fill. And then we're literally just coming through here through our control switch. And really simple circuit here for the electrical. Let's do our pump really quickly. So we come through here, we have a cap. But we are coming through this relay right here. So normally open, normally close. And we're back feeding to the same spot. So same thing here. If our bin control is open, okay, this is obviously not going to run. And then you can actually see the condenser fan is wired with it together. So in theory, they should be always be running together. The condenser fan and the pump so that's a good hint of if the pumps running and the condenser fans not running or vice versa that's something we need to look into so these little subtle hints that the schematic gives us are super important that's why it's important to take five minutes to read the schematic it'll teach you the sequence of operations and then we can move on from there all right so we got our new uh trough here so let's just get it quickly sanitized you know, anything going in the ice machine anything that's new just quickly sanitize it you know, you don't know what's on your hands, who's been touching it. So let's get that all cleaned up. Alright, let's pop her back in. So it slides in nice and easy. Let's put back our tube on here for our pump. And you can see, see how tight this one is now? It's not loose like the other one. So I'm feeling confident that this is going to resolve the issue. And we are into harvest now. Alright, so we're filling the trough again with our solenoid. And you can see our pumps running and look at that. She's dry, no water. So it looks like this trough will resolve the issue, but obviously let's drop a batch of ice see what's going on and still dry there's nothing in this bin whatsoever look at that okay so our water level in the trough is maintaining it's transferring the water from the trough onto the coil and we have a little bit of a drip on the edge here but it's so minimal it's not even getting down to the ice bin all right so now we're harvest our ice bin is dry which is great news so we resolved the leaking water problem and look at that making some beauty ice here look at it just plopping into the bin so it looks like we have resolved our issue which is great news and you can see from here yeah we're making really good ice that's a good shape i'm super happy with that and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I like dumping the first batch out. Who knows? It's, I know I sanitized it. It may taste like sanitizer. Who knows? You don't want to get called back and they say the ice tastes funny just from that sanitizer. So anytime I clean or do a repair, I always dump that first batch out. 
So let's get all that cleaned out. But we're all good. We made ice. I'm happy with that. And we are all good here. All right, so to be perfectly honest, uh, ice machines were probably the hardest thing I had to learn. Um, it wasn't until I got formal training on them that things started making sense. Uh, but really what clicked for me when it made sense was when I broke it down in three circuits. So we go water, electrical, and refrigeration. It's very rare that the refrigeration is going to be the issue. Just ignore that until you get past the electrical and the water. So testing the water, you can do it through the cycle. But if you're not familiar with the cycle, just go to a clean cycle. Start a clean cycle. You know, make sure your water's pumping through. Okay, make sure that it's distributing evenly. Okay, once you rule that out, you're good. Okay, then you can go to your electrical. So are your pumps running? Are your solenoids getting energized? Is your compressor getting energized? If all that's good and you're still not making ice, then you have a refrigeration issue. Okay, so that's the last thing that you want in your mind because it can get super confusing with that hot gas valve and just the concept of it can get confusing. Okay, so like I find probably 70, 80% of the time, it's something to do with that water circuit. Okay, so focus everything on the water circuit and then if a component within that water circuit's not working, okay, that means you have an electrical issue. So go focus on your schematic and then based on those three systems, if you break them down individually, uh, the ice machine it actually becomes not so hard to work on, it actually becomes enjoyable. Okay, so just like always, you know, make sure you're pulling out your schematics. In this instance, I didn't need a schematic. But it's good to pull it out like I found out something that I didn't really know before well I didn't pay attention to the condenser fan runs with the uh, that water pump okay so just little things you're gonna learn from pulling out your schematics and you're just improving your skill okay when you're working on an ice machine there's a lot of downtime it's like 18 to 25 minutes to make a cycle that's a perfect time to pull out your schematic read the sequence of operations you know figure out hey is the solenoid timed or do we have some kind of water level sensor Okay, go through the service manual, go through all that while you're waiting for it to make ice and get into harvest.